We are hearing of huge stimulus packages in many parts of the world. I mean, the EU has an amazing one. The US obviously has just you know, announced uh, you know, trillions of dollars. Um, and then you've got economies where there is no recovery package. You know, they're, they're looking to see what bit of aid they can get and aid, you know, always has its own downside. So the, the circumstances are somewhat different. And we know that before the pandemic, in the five, 10 years prior to the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, we'd already seen, when I was looking at some, at some OECD data, we'd already seen a significant increase in inequalities, inequalities between countries and inequalities within countries the inequalities that you just made mention of. Um, so I guess when we say we're not, you know, I mean, I'm not here to be pessimistic and I'm not pessimistic. I am, I am a person with hope, um, but I'm also a pragmatist and a realist. Um, and I think it's so important that as we try to look forward, we are really conscious of what the, you know, what the context is. And if, and if we're con conscious of the context, then we may, perhaps we can be a bit more challenging of what it is that's required. Um, I was on, the reason I was late was I was on a call with UPenn and we were talking about um, COP um, 26. Um, and you know the fact that we don't want it to just be another talking shop and that there has to be money on the table. There has to be money on the table for city governments to make the changes that are required. And those changes that we require for um, climate, um, are changes that we can, we also need to say we require for pandemic preparedness and more and more so, you know, something like affordable housing, you know, slum upgrades. These are not nice to haves. These are imperatives because what the pandemic has shown is that if you're not, if we don't get rid of the virus in one country, we don't get rid of the virus anywhere. Um, and we don't have the luxury. And, and coming now to your initial question, what, what have I learned? I mean, I guess Ebola was a pandemic, although it was three countries. So it was referred to as an epidemic. Um, but we lost um, 3,589 people, um, which seems like nothing now when you think about COVID. Um, but what, what for your country, about? such an enormous loss. And yeah, it was. I'm sorry. It was. Yes. Um, and I guess the economic impact, I mean, and you, you've, we've seen that all over the world, but we went to minus 21% um, um, GDP um, wow. in that one year period, um, one to two year period. Um, but what did we learn? We learned the importance of community, so similar to what's being said now. And we learned the importance of community as being the solution. You cannot solve um, a public health crisis. You cannot solve climate change. You can't even solve, you know, the economic crisis that we have um, without the involvement and the buy-in of the people in your city or in, you know, in, in the locality in which you're speaking about. Um, so for me, that was the biggest lesson. And, and that's something I've really, I've really taken on board and brought into the way I do city management, recognizing that, you know, big scale problems, you can sit in your office, have all your nice flip charts, all your nice whiteboards, all your plans. Mm -hmm. If the people don't get it, if the people don't go with you, you're not going anywhere. But the great news is when they get it, they push you forward um, and you can actually see transformational change. Um, I don't want to simplify because it's not simple, um, but it is, it is true. That is true. The community ownership can actually lead to significant improvements in, in the way your city functions.